Oh wait, I said an error occurred. The, hold on, let me. What happened? We have some technical difficulties. Uh, Lady the Chef will be joining us shortly um, to do her intro. Okay, we live. Oh, it started. That was so weird. It started already. <laughs> do the intro. It gave me a nice little error. But listen, we are here. We're live. Welcome back, everybody, to Nick's Chicks. I'm your girl, Lady and the Chef, joined mm -hmm. by my co host this evening. D Belox 21, you gotta just roll with the punches. <laughs> exactly. I mean it 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 said we were having technical difficulties, but apparently we're not even better. <laughs> we can kick it off. The Knicks have finished their um season this year, their 2023-2024 season, um, and actually have stepped up uh to last year's season. Um, the Knicks have finished with 50 wins, which is the first time they've done that since 2013, which is incredible to hear like that kind of stat alone um, but the fact that the Knicks have overcame adversity considering how many injuries between Julius Randle, Mitch Robinson, OG Ananobi missing a lot of time the Knicks still fat found a way to manage to win games and land in the second seed in the east which is huge um, considering unlike most teams in the league whether they're on the west or the east Got most teams have a one two punch or maybe a three headed monster on teams, and the Knicks really just have Jalen Brunson who carried this team along the way with the help of the supporting cast. Um, for the most part, this season, I will say, and I think this is a testament to where this team is heading and where they're going to continue to go the growth of this team, um, the continuity that this team has found, the togetherness, the trust factor that this team has found. And I think it speaks volumes for what this team has done, um, considering a lot of people are doubting the Knicks and have no belief in this team. Um, this team is still slept on, but I think this New York team, as I've said before, to those of you who follow us and watch us, and those of you who are in the chat, you know I always say how this Knicks team um, has a story to tell. And I believe them being the underdogs is great. I love the Knicks being the underdogs because I believe the Knicks have a story to tell and I believe that they are gonna prove people wrong. Um, a lot of people are counting the Knicks out and have the Knicks as a one and done just for a first round team. And I don't believe this team is just gonna be a first round team. I truly believe that this Knicks will go further um, and we'll get more into our predictions for not just our first round matchup, but um, as far as how far do we think that this New York team will go. Um, but First, we'll start our recapping before we even talk about the season. We'll go into the last game, which was against Chicago, which was game three matchup as the Knicks played Chicago three times towards the end of the season. Not sure who made that scheduling, but if you're hiring, let us know. Um, but nonetheless, the Knicks were able to pick out and get that win against Chicago, um, along with Brooklyn and the Celtics as well. Um, the Knicks played Chicago. Chicago was actually on New York's heels. They played very good defense against the Knicks. I mean, very good defense. Alex Caruso was on Jalen Brunson like white on rice. And Jalen Brunson still managed and to do what Jalen Brunson does and do Jalen Brunson things and was able to still get the ball with the help of good screens and get to his spots and shoot his shots. So while it was great defense, it was better offense. Um, but there was a couple of things in that game that I do want to point out that, of course, it wouldn't be me if I didn't point out any um, little nitpicks that, of course, I always find because, you know, I'm like some college great coaches who are looking for perfection. And I know there's no such thing as a perfect team. And there's teams with floors who are looking like they are perfect. Look at Golden State, who still had their own issues, right? But one of the things that stood out for me in that Chicago game, and I have brought this up, shout out to um, Queen. Um, I'm a panel member there on Mondays. Uh, catch me there on the Queen's court. And this was something I have brought up and I couldn't wait to talk about this with you. Was in that Chicago game, the Knicks couldn't inbound the ball several times. It wasn't once, it wasn't twice. 
If there was countless times in that game, the Knicks couldn't inbound the ball. Not sure what was going on with the Knicks and why the Knicks couldn't inbound the ball, but the Knicks were struggling to bring the ball in, which was concerning. Uh, most times you saw where Josh Hart was taking out the ball. And I don't think it was an issue with height and that he wasn't able to see. No one was able to break free to get the ball. And I thought also, aside from that, at the end of that game against Chicago, there was a lot of sloppy plays and just, just sloppiness at the end of the game. Josh Hart went to throw Devo the ball. The ball went in the crowd. Yeah. I, I, you know, Dante went this way. The Josh Hart thought he was still going to be standing where he was standing and threw the ball. Just, you know, and I get things like that happen, but I just feel like in a game like that, we could have avoided that. And we also could have avoided that over time. Um, there was another play. Josh Hart got the ball. The ball bounced off his chest, went off his kneecap, out of bounds. Just, just sloppiness, sloppiness, sloppiness. They also couldn't hold Kobe White. No one had an answer for him defensively. Um. And DeMar DeRozan, if he would hit that last shot, to be honest, the Knicks would have lost the game and wouldn't have had 50 wins. Not that I'm harping on the 50. I think the 50 looks better than 49. It's like pricing. 999 looks better than $10, right? So the 50 looks better on paper and just looks better to show the growth of where this team is going. But the reason why I'm bringing up, for example, like Kobe White and how he played so well against the Knicks was because I think about why the Knicks need to tighten up their defensive efforts, especially going into the playoffs. I'm not sure what they're going to do, whether they face off against Philly or you face off against Miami, and you have that one, maybe two players who decide they're going to go off. And actually, Kobe White was doing a lot of easy plays. He was simple, simple layups to the basket. A couple of times they were a bit razzle-dazzle, Kind of like how Dante DiVincenzo likes to go up and under and give you those a simple layup on the other end. But we didn't have any answers for him. Um, and then it also made me wonder, what if Drummond was in the game? Because Hartenstein didn't have an answer for Vucevic at all. He had 18 points damn near in the first half. So I think... While the Knicks have done a good job defensively as a team throughout the year, I think that they have to pick that up and tighten that up. But you let me know your thoughts on the Chicago game or what did you see that stood out or didn't stand out for you in that game? I, I saw the same thing you saw. Um, a lot of turnovers. They had 21, which is like so uncharacteristic of them. Um, just when you thought they had those turnovers, you know, um, at a minimum, for some reason, you know, Chicago forced them into a lot of, you know, unforced um, turnovers. It was, you know, nobody could hold on to the ball. Nobody was coming to the ball. Just, just, I mean, just mistakes that they definitely have to clean up. Um, you know, again, Chicago had them on their heels. They didn't make anything easy. Um, and and the Knicks, they it seemed like they. I don't know. There, there was like no fight in them. You know, they pulled it off. Yeah, they, they did get the win, but it, it had to go to overtime. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They seemed like they was out of sorts uh, for whatever reason. Or maybe it was a Sunday early game. You know, the Knicks, I mean, they don't fare well in, in early games. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've noticed that. Um, they come out sluggish and slow. Um, right. And again, now they got to play catch up. Um, and, and like we keep alluding to, there was the help. You know, where's that help? You know, come gonna come from? You know, this was a team that they, you know, quite frankly, they should have. I'm not saying blow them out, but it shouldn't shouldn't have come down to an overtime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, two was you know sometimes better than three. I some people oppose. Maybe they should have got the third seed. But either way, you still got to bounce that ball. No matter who you face, whether it's the second, third, fourth, you're still going to have to play whoever you face. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I, I think the Knicks kind of, well, they knew what was at stake, you know, that they, they, they want to 
I think they wanted to get that second seed, but just overall, there's a lot of, you know, you know, like, I can't even say it was a matchup because, like you said, Drummond, you know, if he was in there, he, that, uh, their coach, he, he tends to go big. So then that would have definitely been a matchup problem, you know, for, um, I heart and, and both, um, you know, you know, Josh, you know, you know so these are things that they got to like clean up. Um, they did get the win, you know, 50, you know, we, you know, that was, our, I think we predicted that at the beginning, but as you know, we were just watching it, you know, it, it decreased for me. Um, but you know, over, I'm, I'm happy that they, that they got the win and, um, you know, so it's, it's on to the next. Is that a concern for you for the next, um, you know, potentially this Saturday, which would be game one of whoever they're playing, that it can possibly be an early game? Is that a concern for you that maybe the Knicks may come out to maybe a possibly a, so, a slow start? And that can, you know, kind of be like that Achilles heel for them. And now they have to play what the Knicks know how to do very well is playing catch up instead of the Knicks coming out when they usually play more of like an evening game versus potentially that game. It can be as early as maybe like a 12, one o'clock game on Saturday. Yes and no. Yes, because that's what they're, you know, those, they don't do well for those matinee games, but no, because they should be well rested. Mm -hmm. So that should be in their favor. You know, they get a lot of reps in uh, from once from a Saturday to a Saturday. So they have like a week. Definitely guys can definitely, you know, although you're practicing, but you still can, you know, get that extra rest in. So yes and no. I mean, it's not a concern because hopefully they should be well rested. Um, a lot of practice in. Um, and, you know, just get their minds right mentally, you know, as, as well as their body physically. So yes and no. I mean, again, this this should be in their favor, um, right. you know, although, you know, because it's home court. And again, uh, they should be well rested. So no, nah, for, for some reason, this particular game is not really concerning more so than the regular season. Yeah. So, nah. Yeah, I, I think um I think it varies, but I agree with you a hundred percent on that one because the Knicks need to be I think they just need to be ready. I agree with you. If you have a week off, you're well rested mentally. I think these guys need to be locked in. I see Mitchell Robinson said he's staying off of social media. I don't know if you read that. He he yeah, said, don't yeah. nobody text me. Don't nobody call me. He said, because I'm trying to stay locked in and, and focused. And you know what? Good for you, Mitch. I think yeah. that's a good idea to keep you locked in and ready for the playoffs. Because here's the thing, too, with the Knicks. I don't want to see the Knicks. I think too many people are harping on who's the easier team which, okay, rightfully so. Like, yeah, you may think, oh, well, this team may be a little easier to go against versus another team. Either way, whoever we go up against, I think it's a challenge nonetheless, whoever yeah. the Knicks face in the first season. But I think that's a good thing for this team. I think the Knicks need to face adversity and not have a smoother ride like we did last year against um, Cleveland, who we know even this year, we, we have Cleveland. Great, whoop de darn do. But I think the Knicks need to have that challenge and it needs to be a dog fight, you know, going into it. Like the first round, yes, it should be scrappy. The Knicks got to be prepared to come out and be locked in and knock down shots. Got to be prepared to play A1 defense. Got to be prepared to, you know, make the extra pass. You know, guys need to be prepared to do all the little things and play their role to 100% level and come out every game of that series and be ready. Right. So I think that that whether they play Philly, you're going to have a challenge with Embiid. Yeah. Stephen A and people saying Embiid looking gimpy and he not looking 100 percent. It doesn't matter. He even when we we people, I think some people forget we played Philly and Embiid was playing in one of those games. Yeah. He wasn't hurt. He still dropped 30 something points against Hartenstein. Did Hartenstein make it challenging for him? Yes. 
each of the times we played Philly, Hartenstein played a great game. So now I think now that having Mitch back, you have that that help, and hopefully Precious is locked in and ready as well because he may need his number may get called, and Tibbs may need him to go out there for a couple of minutes and give some assistance, right? And then when you think about if we face off against Miami. No, it's not the same team that we faced off against last year with all those random players and they gave Vincent and all these guys and they were able to shoot the ball and knock down shots. But Miami's just one of those teams that Spolstra could coach anybody in a league. It yes. could be no names and they'll still come out there and perform. And and, and that's what I <clears throat> that's what I was gonna allude to. You know, your people's looking at the team aspect and the players, but you gotta realize coaching plays a hell of a big part in these guys. Spolstra is like, he's top tier. I mean, somehow these guys, they get locked in in the playoffs and everybody turns it up an extra notch, but just his coaching and what he's able to do and have these guys play. It's it's a whole different, like, well, yeah, Miami's 40, they were 46 and um like 30s, you know, six or whatever, but they 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 respond. And just just his coaching style brings out another level to his players. So yeah. I, he, he's top tier. So yeah, Philly, we beat them three uh one, Miami two one, but maybe we would have played Miami another game, we'd probably have won that. But again. It does, that doesn't matter. You still have to bounce that ball and play defense and run your offense, no matter who you face. So, you know, and, and it's a cop to me. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a cop out for that's my opinion. No matter who we face, you still have to face them, you know. Exactly. And like you said, face at that adversity. You know, um, you, you can't you can't shy away and cow away because they are, you know, on paper, whatever, or whatever people are saying about you. That's the adversity that you need to overcome. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, it shouldn't matter who, who you play. Right. Exactly. I do want to um, quickly go over the stats of that Chicago game, because I think these are important to go over. So as far as the Knicks, OG Ananobi, he played 43 minutes. He had 11 points, uh, five rebounds, four assists. Josh Hart played 40 minutes. He finished with a double-double. He had 10 rebounds, 12 points. Isaiah Hartenstein played 31 minutes. He finished with 13 rebounds, four assists, eight points. Dante had fifth, played 53 minutes. He had 25 points, seven rebounds. Jalen Brunson played 41 minutes. He had 40 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Um, and then you had Bojan who played 17 minutes and he had 13 points. Um, and Miles McBride played 14 minutes and had seven points. Stat-wise for that game, the Knicks were at 50% field goal percentage. They were at 37% from the three uh, field, 37% uh, three-point uh, percentage. They were 12 for 32. Free throws, the Knicks were 16 for 21 um, at 76%. This has also been a problem with the Knicks down to the last couple of games to end off the season. Um, the Knicks have to clean up the free throws. We've been making one, missing one, missing one, making the second one. They have to clean that up as well. Total rebounds. The Knicks did out rebound Chicago in that last game, 53 to 44. We had 16 offensive, 37 defensive. We finished with 27 assists. The Knicks did have six blocks. Chicago only had three. We had seven steals. Chicago had 15 steals. And then what really stood out for me is that the Knicks had 21 turnovers. Like, why are you turning over the ball that many times? And I think I was even telling you, like, if you looked every time the camera was showing Tibbs, he was pissed. Because I think Tibbs was so confused and yet disgusted at, like, what is happening? Like, what are y'all doing out there that you're throwing a ball over so loosey-goosey? Every time you turn around, we get the possession. We just turning the ball right over. So the turnovers need to be cleaned up. The free throws need to be cleaned up. Points in the paint, the Knicks did have 60, but Chicago has 70. Um, between Vujovic and Kobe White, the Knicks couldn't somehow figure how to keep them out of the paint. 
And I think that's another thing that the Knicks are going to have to work on going into the postseason. Um, you know, you can't just necessarily rely on Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein to try to be the defensive threats in the paint. I think it's going to be a collective effort. One of the things that I noticed that does hurt the Knicks is when a team has a player and the player is dribbling the ball, he gets the high screen. Now, Hartenstein and Mitch have to decide, do they continue to guard that big man, that five on the opposing team? Or they're trying to guard the player who just got the screen and now is coming at him because now that player He's deciding, am I going to dump it off to the to the big man or do I just take the easy layup or the, the, the quick little shot, use it off the bank or whatever, because Mitch and Hartenstein have to decide who do I guard? And that kills the Knicks a lot, right? And that's the oldest trick in the book, right? It goes back as beyond however many years in the game of basketball. I think, though, whoever's guarding that guard, that shooting guard on the opposing player has to do the best of their ability to fight over the screens. You know who does a really good job fighting over screens on the Knicks? Deuce McBride. Oh, yeah, yeah. He he does a great job, like, really sticking with his guy and making sure he's fighting over screens. And then I would probably say um, OG does a really good job doing that. But I think it's going to take a collective effort because – even if you get beat off the screen, you have to figure out a way to try to get back to that player who has the ball. Because again, now that leaves either our big man, Mitch or Hartenstein to try to any mini mighty mo, who should I guard him? Because if I step up and I get so frustrated with the both of them, because I'm like, damn, like you fell for that trick. But it's like, they're trying to stay with their guy under the basket. But then here you got this one with the ball and he's just trying to make the easy layup. So I don't know. I just think that it's like little things like that. You only could do but so much. You only can control but so much in that situation. And I understand that. But I think that we have to really clean it up defensively. The last few games, even against um, Brooklyn. Yeah, the Knicks pulled away and had a better second half against Brooklyn. But it just, I don't know. I, and again, maybe it could be that the Knicks were tired. Guys are playing 40. 45, 50 minutes in a game. But again, I think you can't have those excuses going into the playoffs. You made it there for a reason. You made it into the second seed for a reason. The playoffs is a different animal. You know, so I guess it's just, it is what it is. But I just want to recap your thoughts on the Knicks season as a whole. Like your thoughts on the Knicks season. Um. I think you had the Knicks at less wins. Yeah, and no, I you did. Were... I, had, I, I, I dropped it down. It was originally 50. Then I, then I dropped, I think, to like 47, somewhere like 47 or 48. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, playing and, you know, proving the naysayers wrong. Um, so, yeah, I, I did lower it down to um, 47. But overall, you know, like you said, this is something that's been done, ha hasn't been done since 2013. And there's a lot of records um, that were broken. You know, Debo broke the, um, you know, he beat um, Fournier out, out uh, for the most threes in a season. Um, you know, just Jalen Brunson, what he's been able to accomplish. Um, you know, he <laughs> not only did he make them, you know, better, but he made a lot of them richer. So, um you know, so just overall, you know, just being a floor general, a leader, and you know, you, and and leadership comes in different forms. So he was able, and just being able to carry that team, the adversity that they had to um overcome, um, and just being able to play and will this this team two fifty wins. Yeah, he had a great supporting cast. Um, he, like I said, he he made them better players. Um, so just by them being able to accomplish what they were able to do, not playing with a full roster, um, and you know, because they, they were banged up for for quite. A, Mitch was out fifty games. You know, OG I think on record so far as when he's played like twenty three games since being um 
yeah. you know, being a, a late addition. Um, so just again, these guys just responding um to to the play and Jalen just making them a, a better he's become a better player. And so, you know, like you said, it's 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 become infectious, you know, just with how he plays and just um and it's motivating for them. Yeah. Um, you know, so just just overall what they've been able to accomplish, and you know, and kudos to Tibbs. Yeah, there's there's a lot of you know things that you know Tibbs should have done as far as just you know overplaying the guy's minutes, um, some adjustments and things he you know didn't make, but um, you know these you have to play with what you what you the cards that you dealt with, um, you know. There's a lot of guys that didn't respond. Um, you know, Burks, you know, he, he's one of them. Um, and and there's players that did, you know, uh, Miles, he became a student of the game. And Miles, you know, McBride has been able to, like, you know, step in and just he's learned a lot just under, you know, um, you know, Brunson. So, you know, there's this, there, of course, there's going to be some good and bad. But overall, just to, you know, get to where you're at the second seed now you're in the playoffs um and it's it's, it's the sky's the limit from here they can go all the way only person that's stopping them is themselves no other team is themselves that's my that's my motto how you know because they can play with, with the best of them yeah no doubt this team has for sure um risen to the occasion i think um what this next team has done despite all the injuries, um, you know, I think also having changes in a lineup, which I thought was a really good thing. And I th thought that was needed, you know, um, it was a shocker. And I think sometimes change is good. And I think that that shocking trade was needed. Um, I think if it would have been predictable and we would have known about it ahead of time, you know, it just, I don't know, I just think it made for a better um, moment and it made for a great moment in sports and then bat the game of basketball. So I think that phase one of getting rid of OG and um, quickly no, and then mean, bringing in, uh, uh, excuse okay. me, RJ and then bringing in um, OG. And I thought OG was a perfect fit for this team. Um, his impact is greatly felt on this team. And just like with Jalen Brunson being a leader of this team, you know, um, Randall said he's not comfortable or really wasn't trying to be the 1A guy. Um, and he's more comfortable being the 1B, possibly sometimes a 1C on teams. But Jalen Brunson, and I think that was something that was missing on this next team was leadership. This next team is definitely missing a leader and someone who can be able to come on, you know, to on this team and guide this team. And I think Jalen Brunson did just that. He came here and brought this team that was, before he got here, the Knicks were just a mediocre team. It's not me hating on Randall. It's, it's let's call a spade a spade. The Knicks were mediocre. And I've ride, been riding with the Knicks throughout the bad, the bad, and the ugly. And now it's finally nice to see some good happening here. And I also think part of that is there was some cleanup in the front of the house of the Knicks too with the front office because Leon Rose has, I'm gonna give him his props too. He's done a great job. You know, I think there's, there was, there's, and I think there still is this pressure on Tibbs, right? Even though he's in his tenure here with the Knicks, he's brought this team um, to new heights each level and his team has grown. But I think because the Knicks got to the second round last year, I probably would have went further if some people didn't hide or we didn't deal with the injuries, right? But I think that the Knicks organization as a whole for this year, they're looking for the Knicks to go quite far, even with the injuries. I think they're still looking for the Knicks to go far as a team, right? Like the first round is not to me going to be good enough. And I think Initially, before that phase one happened where we got rid of quickly and RJ, I think Tibbs was probably like, listen, y'all want me to make something happen here? I'm working with who I have here on this team. This is what I have. So this, I'm trying to make something happen with this. 
but it's not going to blend well with what I'm trying to do here. And I think Leon Rose said, okay, well, let me make something happen. And then he did that phase one and we said, okay. And OG came and we were like, wow, look how he fits so well into this team and with this squad and just the little things that he does. I mean, just great job there. Now the phase two, I still have a question mark there because Bojan doesn't play great defense. While I think he's great on shooting, uh, shooting wise, and he can hit shots, he did shoot an air ball in Chicago. I was a little embarrassed for him. What, what happened? I mean, you shouldn't be shooting air balls. I know he can shoot shots, but again, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not even going to go there, yeah. but I'm not. I'm, I'm going to leave him alone on that one. I'm going to leave that whole thing. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. But the phase two, I still have a question mark because we brought in Burks. And you and I did an entire show on who would be backup, potential good backup point guards for Jalen Brunson. And out of all the players, we brought in stinky Alex Burke, who's stinking up the joint. And he just has been horrible, horrible. But he'll be gone. I'm not going to even stress about and go down that rabbit hole either. But overall, I think that what this team has done, I had the Knicks at 50 wins. I should have found that clip. And I think I'll have it ready for when we go on um, for our next show. Um, and have that ready um, for Thursday or either Saturday. I'll pull together that clip um, where we talked about our predictions. But I did have the Knicks at 50 wins. And you know, because I'm very hard on the Knicks. Like, I'm very, um, shout out to AJ. He said, damn, he was like, you, he said, lady, real hard on this team. Yeah, I am. Because I have, I think my expectations are high for this team. And because of where they went last year, now I'm like, okay, the bar is set. You can't go backwards. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even if the Knicks, to me, if they would have finished, like, anywhere further than fourth, to me, I would have been like, what's going on? I wouldn't have wanted to hear anything about, we. well, we had injuries and this one. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to. Just like I didn't want to. Remember people used to say in the chat, well, Randall ankle. And I was like, stop bringing the ankle up. Let's move on. Let's move on. And the show must go on. And that's how I feel about what this next team did throughout the season and what they have to do going into the playoffs. Overall, I give the Knicks, I think for the regular season, I give the Knicks, if I had to grade them, I'm going to give them a, um, I'm going to give them a B. I'm going to give the Knicks a B. My expectations are still high. They're still there um, going into this postseason now. And I have high expectations for where they need to go. For me, I don't know about you, but you can answer this after me. Um, I think if the Knicks don't move past the first round, it's going to be both disappointing. And I think it'll be somewhat of a failure to the regular season. Just because while I mentioned just a few minutes ago, they have to be able to face adversity on whoever they're playing, right? No matter if that's Philly, if you was playing Indiana, Miami, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But I think that this team has to be able to learn how to come together, right? Play their butts off and they have to be able to win and get past the first. I think that's important. You can't go to the second round last year and then this year you you fall short and i think for me why to be disappointing is because like i said the expectation is there and because the knicks came so far throughout the regular season you made it to second seeding in the east that speaks volumes you won 50 games with no other no other playmaker on the team so I feel like whether we going to get, get revenge against Miami or we going against Philly, I agree with you. The Knicks should be the Knicks can get anyone in the, this league the business, but you can't lose gas now and get winded now and all of a sudden forget how to play team basketball and what you've been doing once we get to this first round. So if they don't give it their all and don't come out 
and don't find a way to put move past, I'm going to be upset and be prepared, chat, because y'all going to hear it. <laughs> going to hear it. Um, let me read a few of these. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Joseph Cologne. He said, what's up, my next chick? Shout out to you, ladies. My wife watches you all the time. Oh, salute. That's Hello. dope. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, guys, if you haven't. He said, don't matter. We want whoever. Put him in the trunk, B. <laughs> I'll yeah, you. I agree. That's 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 how all uh, lady uh diva locks feels. Eddie C salute. He said the playoffs will put Tibbs coaching confidence to strong test. What adjustments is he gonna make when opposing teams play the zone? I think that's a great question. Because the Knicks sometimes struggle against zones. And you know what happens? that back and forth crap that I hate with the ball and no one's going anywhere except yeah. Brunson. Hello. I, I'm telling you, I I feel it. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get annoyed on Saturday because no one's gonna do anything. And if Brunson doesn't make the move, the only other person I say they'll make the move is Josh Hart eventually. Cause it's like it's like a fire is under his ass and he's like, all right, look, I, I gotta do it because the shot clock is counting down now. And maybe you'll get OG Ananobi, who I think needs to be very aggressive in this postseason. Yeah, for sure. OG is going to have to step up. Josh Hart is going to have to step up. Dante DiVincenzo, yesterday on the podcast, they were saying he's done a good job being able to, um, and I'm not using the right uh, wording of how they said it, but they said he's been doing a good job being able to get to the basket. Me personally, I haven't really seen that unless he's on a fast break. I think at times, while I think Dante DiVincenzo is a heck of a three-point shooter, I think sometimes he settles for that three when he's off. And when he's off and not making them, that's why I want to see him go into the basket sometimes to get that rhythm and seeing the yeah. shot go down. And then, okay, go back into shooting. So I think I, I'm going to be looking for that for him in the postseason as well, but I need him to step up as well. Yeah, and I want to piggyback what um, Eddie's um, C said. Not only the zone, but, you know, teams are starting to blitz like Jalen. So where's that help, you know, going to gonna come from? Like these guys, they, you know, they, again, this is where, like, there's a, you know, there's a lot of questions, but, you know they got they got to fifty. They didn't get to fifty wins by teams rolling over and just just playing dead. You know they got by playing you know their style of ball. So, but these are the things that let's hope that they're working on this week. You know, you know, because you know teams are gonna they're gonna throw everything at at Jalen Brunson and from the, the, the everything except the, even the kitchen sink they're gonna throw at him. So this is something that deep like as a whole the Knicks gotta like. It's that help, you know, defense on, you know, um, defensively and just offer. Somebody's gonna have to come up and help, you know, because they they will and they they've been they've been throwing, you know, two and three bodies at him as as at any given, you know, game. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, that you know the players gonna have to step up. You know what's something else I noticed in a Chicago game? Whoever for the Knicks was taking out the ball, so. They had Caruso, and let's just say it was Josh Hart who was maybe not taking out the ball, but he was inbound. So Josh or Devo wasn't setting a screen for Brunson to try to break free to be able to get the ball from whoever was inbound inbounding the ball. So essentially, there was like two defenders on Brunson. So every time Chicago made a basket and we went to take the ball out, I don't know if you noticed this. It reminded me of pre-Brunson days when no one knew who was taking out the ball because remember, I used to always get annoyed. Why the hell is Randall bringing up the ball? But we didn't really have anybody bringing up the ball. It looked like those days. Mm -hmm. The Knicks have to figure out who the hell else is bringing up the damn ball. If he has to defend... Okay, and I, I really should have found this clip for today because it, it exists. We'll just say it was Deuce, right? Taking out the ball. I'm just, I, I can't remember who it was exactly. He took out the ball. Well, the ball was kind of just dribbling for a while. 
Then he took out the ball. And then let's say like he threw it to Josh. Josh threw it back to, to Deuce. They were so concerned. This was on at least two or three different plays. They were so concerned the Knicks were getting the ball back to Jalen Brunson. I remember thinking some, I, I yelled at TV. I said, just bring the ball over the half court line. Why are you so concerned with giving Jalen Brunson the freaking ball? Get past the half court line first, then, then think about that. You rather get a backcourt violation because you're so concerned with getting it in his hands? Do you not know how to bring the freaking ball up? Because at one point, Pressure Sachua had to bring the ball up. Yeah, yeah. Right? But just do it. Come. This is what I mean. Like, you got, you can't lose your sense of, I forgot how to play basketball smarts because Jalen Brunson can't. Guess what? Teams are going to do that. They're going to double Jalen Brunson. And guess what? They're going to make sure um, Dante can't get off his little shots. He's going to have to work hard to get the ball. And for the life of me, you know why I figured out? I finally figured out why Bojan doesn't get the ball. He stands in the corner and plants himself. You know that the shortest three-pointer you could take yeah. on the side? He stands. Please watch him on Saturday. He stands right there. Well, that's what, that's, that's another. Move. Well, that's another adjustment, you know, Tibbs is going to have to make, you know? He, but like... <laughs> And I'm going to still put a little bit of the blame on Tiz because why aren't we running something where he's he's able to get a screen so he could run off the curl? Remember I used to complain about this with um, Grimes? I used Grimes. to say, so I'm going to put a little, I'm not going to put it all on Bojan. I'm going to put a little bit on Tibbs. But for the life of me, I don't understand why. Because Grimes used to do the same thing, camp out. Are we yeah. camping or are we playing basketball? You got to move. You you got to somehow. And Bojan tries, but he's not the quickest, nor is his footwork there for him to get free. You know, like Ray Allen knew how to do that really well. He oh, had yeah. great means also to get to the ball, right? But I'm like, if we play smarter, you should be able to hit Bojan easily. Bah, get him the ball and he can hit down the shot. But we make the game harder for ourselves, the Knicks. We make it harder for ourselves when we're on offense. And this is why Jalen Brunson has to just take it in his own hands. Because no one else is doing anything. No one else is becoming a playmaker. No one else is saying, well, let me try to drive to the basket or stop pop or create a little space for myself so I can get the shot that I want to. No one else is doing that on the team. And this is where my concern is for the playoffs for this team. There's a there's a little concern line for me as far as when teams play us in the zone, when teams play us man to man. Because guess what? Jalen Brunson ain't going to have no space. He's not going to have no space. OG, they're going to be on him too. But OG's going to have to be more aggressive. Hartenstein, Mitch, listen, both of them. One, we know you can play defense, but can you make it hard for MB? Can you make it hard for Bam so that they're just not getting easy baskets? Make them work to get the ball. Just planting yourself with your arm behind their back so you're ready to play defense. Is that is that good enough? Is this not the playoffs? Step it up. It's not the regular season. Step it up, babes. <laughs> we we gonna need you to play a little bit more, better than that. And then I'm gonna need both of them to knock down some free throws. This make one miss one. It's a little tiresome. It's old. Let's yeah. let's try to knock both of them down, please, fellas. Please. I'm not asking for a lot. I, I need you both to try to knock down the free throws. But I agree. The Knicks need to make a lot of adjustments. I hope that they're ready because when teams played it, played uh, the Knicks in a zone, our offense becomes stagnant. It becomes very stagnant, and they're going to have to figure something out. Somebody has to be, like, aggressive. I want to see somebody else besides Brunson want it just as badly, want it just as much, and want to take the ball in and, and, and score and give us some points. 
Salute Shy Powers. Salute. Another great point. How does Tibbs handle the non-Brunson minutes and our offensive handicap? I think that goes back to what Diva Lux was just saying. And what I was just saying, the supporting cast, if your name ain't Jalen Brunson, please step to the side. So the rest of y'all, you got to figure it out. The supporting cast on the Knicks team, I think collectively as a whole, everybody has to step it up. It can't just be Jalen Brunson. He, we know Jalen Brunson, just like with Julian, Julius Randle, we know they could give you 40, 50, 60 if they need to, but I think it comes down to the end of the day, is that resulting in a win? Is that resulting in a win at the end of the day? It's going to take a collective team effort each game in this first round series, and that collective effort is going to come from Dante, Josh, Miles McBride, Precious Achua, Mitch, Isaiah, Bojan. If those guys collectively don't step up and do what they need to do, I'm talking about on whether it's defensively, offensively, the Knicks are going to be in trouble. It can't just fall on one guy, maybe two guys. And honestly, we really can't even afford for the Knicks to play the type of games where we may play well the first half, but maybe Dante and Josh, OG, who I forgot to mention as part of that supporting cast, they don't really start get, getting going to like midway in the third quarter. Yeah. Because that was hurting us as well. Like, you know how halftime I come and you look at the stats and only maybe one person got 12 points and everybody else got four, seven, three points. Oh, what's going on? What's going on with three, four points? That's not enough points. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying it's just about the points, but I think it makes a difference if you have more guys who's actively involved. And they're able to contribute to the scoring versus it falling heavily on one person who now the defense is saying, well, we're just going to lock in on him. Or the defense could do what we were saying before and say, well, you know what? We're going to let Brunson do his thing and we're going to play heavy defense on everyone else. Yeah. Now what are going to do? What are going to yeah. do now? Yeah. Because if we heavily guarding everybody else, and we have whoever's our best defender on Brunson, even though Brunson's still going to do Brunson things, what are the Knicks going to do? And when Brunson needs to take a breather and go to the bench, what are the Knicks going to do? Because as much as I appreciate Miles McBride bringing up the ball, I think that's something that he's going to have to work on in the off in the off season is how to control the offense when he is after he brings the ball up past the, the halfway mark and then knowing what he wants to do like yeah you may know the plays but a true point guard with whatever play the coach may want you to run you know what you want to do how you want to orchestrate that offense you're telling whoever to come up stay back you know what i mean come up and set the screen run it back or come back up get back on the block and go there again like that's a, a player who's really confident and knows what he wants to do. That's what I think Miles McBride has to work on to be able to bring to part of his game, right? Because right now he's pretty much like a, a a step up shooter. He can get the ball, catch it, shoot it, catch and shoot type of guy. But McBride is going to have to help out bringing up the ball, right? Because I don't think. Burks is going to get the burn to bring up the ball at all. I think Tibbs is going to rock with McBride. But I think when McBride has that pressure that's going to be on him, he has to know, like, okay, what does he want to do? Not just with the ball, but, mm, okay, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what direction are you trying to go in once you get that ball over the, the half court line? So I, I think that that's something that, I find that he brings the ball up and then it's just pass. He gets it back. He passes it to the right now. He gets it back. 
maybe they may get it to Hartenstein. Hartenstein is looking for someone to cut. It, it's it's very stagnant. There's nothing happening. So we'll see. Will Tibbs be flexible with the rotation? It's an achievement winning 50 games and placing second in the Eastern Conference. The real show, however, is the playoffs. Uh, absolutely it is. I mean, I think Tibbs is only going to be with, what, a nine-man rotation at most? Yeah, I yeah, probably so. Yeah, I don't think he's – now the flexibility – I think the flexibility comes game by game. I think Tibbs is going to read what's happening in the game, and that determines who he uses in his rotation. Because yeah. the nine-man rotation he uses, he trusts those nine guys, but I think it depends on the, the in-game situation. So. If we in game two of the first round and maybe Tibbs want to rock with, you know, maybe he needs Mitch more than Hartenstein or maybe he wants to throw in Precious a little bit. That's what he's going to do. Some games, some guys may get a little less minutes and some games somebody may play damn near the whole game. You know, so I think it's Tibbs is going to watch what's happening in a real live game situation to see well, who he's going to go with. And that's how he's going to, you know be flexible and rotate his rotations in the game. So Shaw said Brunson defense has greatly improved. Yeah, it has. And also the fact that Brunson's one of the very few players in a league who sacrifices his body for the offensive charges. Cause you really don't see many NBA players do that anymore. Oh, yeah. sure. hmm. So Salute Coach Sar 617. Salute Marcel Montgomery. He's a okay. lady, fellow trucker checking in. Salute to you for checking in. Guys, hit that like button while you're here. Who needs to be traded, Coach Sar? I think Randall, we was talking about him earlier. Um, salute B Bowler. Salute. He said, look how much Brunson, the Musketeers, OG, Hartenstein, and McBride bring. I will say that the Villanova boys play very well together. And I think, like, low-key but high-key, they want to bring a championship to New York. Like, they know that they did it back in Villanova, and they want to be able to do it here with the Knicks. And it can be done, right? Um, and again... I don't disagree with this. I think that each guy, for sure, McBride brings a certain amount to the table. Hartenstein brings a certain amount to the table. OG, they all make an impact in their own way. They really do. And I, I, I think McBride is going to be the X factor in a lot of these games because teams are going to sleep on McBride, just like I think they're going to do with um, Josh Hart. I think Josh Hart is going to have to look for his shot and take it. Because yeah. teams are going to be daring Josh Hart and McBride to take the shot. They're going to be daring them. Like, go ahead, take it. You're not going to make it. Take it. And it's not because they can't make it, but they're not going to be expecting Deuce and Josh to, to just be t going off and hitting threes, taking it like that. Now, Dante DiVincenzo, yeah, they know he can make the three. Now, is the three going to be knocking down? We, we're praying for that. We're praying that his threes are going down. But I think respectfully, all of these guys bring something to the table, and that's what makes this Knicks team such a great team. Yeah, they all made a contribution. Sometimes it wasn't what we as fans, you know, thought they should have or wish they would have, and you know, but you know, they 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 got these 50 wins collectively as a team. You know, yeah, the bulk of it did fall on Brunson, you know, unfortunately. But they all make they all make a contribution in their own, you know, special or unique way and what they bring to the um to the team. Exactly. Exactly. Salute Cotton Candy. She says salute, salute to Nick Strix in the chat. Nice. Salute said, salute to all brothers and sisters and also to the panelists. Just saying, there's a reason they removed the Brunson do with Deuce. They know, and those adjustments are to be Brunson, Deuce, and Diva. Yeah, I mean, but again, I think 
like I always say, Deuce plays so well when he plays alongside Brunson. He does. You know, he's not going to always be that way because, you know, he's, you know, going to supposed to be relieving um, those minutes. But when he plays alongside him, I, I think it's a, it's a nice, you know, you know, tandem when, when they do play, you know, uh, Deuce definitely feeds off of um, Brunson and just, you know, how and how he plays. You know, it's not going to always be like that, but, you know, it is what it is. I agree. I think Deuce plays really well with Jalen Brunson on the floor together, um, you know, and I think he's, We've said this countless times. He's a student of the game, so he's taking heed and following under Brunson, which is nice. You know what I mean? Like that's only going to make him get better. And I believe Deuce truly will grow. Um, he's going to get better. He's only going to get better. Like what he's shown us, what he can do. I mean, heck of a signing, getting him at you know a, a nice discounted deal, and he's just proven that you know he's he belongs here on this team. For sure, he belongs. There is no one that can guard one-on-one guard Brunson. In order to defend Brunson to a good level is by double and triple teaming him. Yeah, I agree. But you know what Brunson does well? He has patience. He won't out-dribble the air out of a basketball. He knows when to give up the ball. He knows how to dribble low when he needs to. And he knows how to get out of that double, triple team and get that ball back, you know, and he's not going to let that stop him and, you know, get down. And I think another part of that is because his dad is on the sideline. So a lot of times, if you notice in times at timeouts, Rick will be telling Brunson, like, you need to go over here or this is coming at you. And that helps him throughout the game. So having your pops there. Tibbs is not going to step on Rick's toes. Rick yeah, knows what yeah. he's doing, not just because that's his son, but I think that fuels Jalen even more because his father has those eyes and he sees what's going on and he can tell him, like, you know, this is what you need to adjust or go into doing this. And that helps him when we come out of a timeout and he's able to, you know, do whatever he does and does those Brunson things. Salute John McDonald. He said, OG needs to be more aggressive to the rim and draw fouls. Also, McBride must be more aggressive driving to the basket, get into the free throw line. He has the quick quickness. I a thousand percent agree on that, especially about McBride. I don't know why you, McBride, you don't see him doing that enough. Hello, use your quickness. Drive to the freaking basket. Yeah, yeah, McBride, yeah. yeah. He doesn't do that. This is what I mean. The Knicks make it harder for themselves. They're capable of doing these. Remember, we used to always say that about Randall. He's making the game so much harder for himself. Just yeah. the way he's going about certain moves, doing what he's doing. I used to be like, why are you doing that? You making it so hard for you to score and get points. We know you could score the points. We know you could score 25 plus points a night, but you're making it so hard, a mountaintop, just to get the points that you need to get. I 100% agree. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. OG definitely needs to be more aggressive. I think OG knows how to get to the basket. OG actually does that really well. When no one else is doing anything for the Knicks, OG does a heck of a job being able to get to the basket and get us a nice, easy basket. Like he'll just dunk the ball and do a nice, easy layup. He does that really well and he gets the foul. So he... But this is the thing, what I was trying to get at with the Knicks. In the playoffs, if the shots are not falling for the Knicks, I think what's key is that the Knicks have to learn how to drive to the basket, draw a foul, try, get the foul while trying at least, stop the clock and get to the free throw line and make the free throws but continue to keep passing and settling or even sometimes taking the quick shots, the threes that are not needed. You don't always have to settle for a three. And the Knicks had um, at moments in that last game against Chicago where we could have even ended the game, but remember there was like two possessions where we were like rushing instead yeah. of like taking our time. And I was like, what are they doing? It, it, it's, it's like, the, the basketball smarts have to be there. 
And then I think when you have certain players and they need to do what they do, playing a role, doing exactly what you're saying in this in this uh, chat right here, they they have to think like that. So if McBride is smart, I hope someone and the coaching staff, assistant coaches are telling these guys this. He does have the quickness. He needs to utilize that to his advantage and get to the basket. Um, and yeah, OG. OG was actually driving to the basket against Chicago, but a few times he just got shut down. Um, and I know DeRozan even like poked the ball from behind him at one point, which was a really nice play. Uh, but yeah, OG, he's going to be the difference maker for us. He's going to have to step up for sure. Also, Isaiah Hartenstein must look to be more offensive minded. Yeah, Isaiah Hartenstein kills me. As much as I like the guy, he will be at the corner of the free throw line. And he won't even take the shot. He yeah. will keep his back to the basket instead of you. I've heard even Clyde say this plenty of times. Turn around. The basket's that way. But he's too busy looking for the handoff to pass it back to whoever, whatever guard is out there, whether it's Brunson, Josh, Dante, whoever. And then sometimes, and I've even seen Mitch do that, where they'll just dribble it and then take it to the basket. But I wish they would... Have that mentality all the time. It's not going to always, the lane is not going to always be there for them to just drive to the basket. I understand that. But there's plenty of times, especially in Hartenstein's case, take two dribbles. Try, try this. Take two dribbles and then do your floater that you do. And, and this is why I get frustrated with like certain Knicks players because I feel like on the offseason, Hartenstein, I'm speaking to you. I need you to work on that in the offseason. You want a bag? You see how Vucevic can hit them shots, the mid-range shots. I might even ask you to shoot threes. You you can hit. Hello? Not asking for a lot here. Am I asking for a lot? He, he developed that floater, you know, in the uh, little mid. But you feel like that floater, he's doing it with confidence? Because sometimes I don't feel like Hartenstein's yeah, yeah. confident with that floater when he's putting it no, up. No, I agree. Exactly. So it's not just the floater. I'm talking about if you right near the free throw line, like to the side of it, you should be able to knock down a shot from right there. That should be cash money every time mm -hmm. for Hartenstein. That's adding more repertoire to your game. Don't limit yourself to just layups, dunks, and a, and a couple of floaters. And then even sometimes with the floaters, they're not always cash money. They bonk off the back of the rim. Because I don't feel like he'd be confident when he goes up with it. Sims had did that the other day. He had dribbled in the Chicago game. Well, it could have been the Brooklyn game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. He wasn't confident when he went up with the, um, the floater. It wasn't that it was great defense. I feel like he did it because that's a move that he practices. But he's not confident with that move just yet. But I agree, Hartenstein needs to be more aggressive-minded and he needs to stop keeping his back to the basket and look to try to score. Salute Sharice Duncan. He said, I'm worried about the non-Brunson minutes and not having a, a for real, a real four. Yeah, that's what Eddie C was just saying in the comment we read a few minutes ago. The Knicks supporting cast are going to have to figure it out. When Brunson needs to take a few minutes to catch his breath and hydrate, what are the rest of you guys going to do? You're going to let the lead dwindle down like you did against Boston when you had a 31-point lead and you let them get down to as many as eight? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. And quite honestly... We all should have confidence in whoever we are facing, like we said at the start of this episode in the first round. The Knicks are more than capable of beating Philly. I could care less about Embiid. And I'm not going to hold you. Maxi is a great player. But Philly's also known to not go very far in the playoffs. They somehow dwindle. But don't get it twisted. Gimpy, limpy, Embiid is still going to make it happen and give you 30-plus points a game. 
And Mac is going to put the need for speed on and, and go off in these games. And, and so they're um, they a different coach. So you got to factor that in. They ain't under doc, you know, so coaches, I, they matter. <laughs> agree. Agree. Pressure has given Tibbs the trust in his game. Precious is an underrated defender. I thought Precious came through huge for us in a Chicago game at the end. He didn't play game. most of the game until he came in at the end of the game. And I think he did make one kind of like, I don't know if he, I think he threw the ball away. Like he threw it to a player in Chicago's hands. And I remember Tibbs was upset, but Tibbs kept, he rode with him. Like it was a timeout. He put Precious back in. I said, okay, he's going to ride with Precious. But Precious had two nice blocks, two great defensive stops back to back. And then he got us two easy baskets where Brunson was able to find him. Goes back to my point of what I'm saying. This is why guys have to be ready. You see how Brunson was able to find him? Because no one's going to be thinking about Precious Achua in the playoffs. Stay ready. Do you know who they worried about? Mitch and Hartenstein. The rest of you, you know what I mean? If they download, they're not going to be worried about Precious like that. But if you make nice plays like that and come off the bench and you could contribute, you're going to get the minutes in games. You're going to get the minutes. I thought that he was kind of quiet prior to that Chicago game. We hadn't really seen Precious in any games playing, but I thought that he came through huge for us in that game. And I think he'll be another person who a, a, could be an X factor for the Knicks in the playoffs for sure. Our key plays have playoff experience, so there will be no jitters. There shouldn't be jitters. Yeah, that, and that's what I, that's what I was gonna say. They, you know, um, you know, we're we're bringing, you know, most of our core with the exception of OG, Bogey, and and Devo, but they there's experience there, so that should, you know, definitely, you know, not definitely, but that should be in their favor, you know, just. And, and what they've been able to accomplish throughout the, the season, you know, sweat mm -hmm. with Debo. If a three's not hitting, you know, do something else. Like, you know, like Tibbs always say, you know, it's the other intangibles that they can do. Well, this is when they're going to may have to, like, utilize those intangibles. Right. 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 Mitch must play smart, no careless fouls. So does Hartenstein. You can't afford to have you f have three fouls in the first quarter. This is not the beginning of the season. Let's play smarter. Play smarter and harder, but play smarter. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think either Mitch nor Hartenstein could afford to get. No one really on the Knicks could afford to get yeah. in foul trouble. And don't, the careless fouls, save that for somebody else. Don't do that and start that crap in the arm. Um, don't be lazy. Move your feet. Make smart decisions on defense. You know when it boils down, boils down to it. Yeah, we must find a way to avoid giving opponents open threes. Listen, if the Knicks do not guard that perimeter, they're in trouble. Because either what's going to happen is teams are going to pull away. Start splashing threes like they playing against the Splash Brothers. And now the Knicks are going to have to either, the Knicks are either going to be playing back a back and forth game against whatever whatever team we play against, or the Knicks are going to have to go on a fight and have to crawl back into the game because now you allow the team to hit six, seven, eight threes. And now, you know, now you're down by 12, 30, don't, you have to guard the three. It's imperative that the Knicks guard the three-point line. You have to guard the three. Yeah, no, yeah. But the, the one, the 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 man-to-man -man defense has to be spot on with the Knicks. That lazy defense, sit down if you're not really here to play defense. You have to be prepared to play strong defense against whoever you're playing against. And especially, Mitchell Robinson and Hartenstein and B could shoot the three. 
Porzingis could shoot the three. You, when you playing against players, see the Knicks don't have a, a five man who could play like a Giannis, like a MB, like a Jokic, like a Porzingis. We don't have that. But use your strengths that you do have. So you got to make them work harder to even get the ball. I don't even think allowing, like, for example, we play Philly and Maxie's able to just do a nice bounce pass. And now you let allowing and B to set himself up. You just made it easier for him. You allowed him to even set himself up. And now you trying to face guard him and wait for whatever move he's going to make to try to go to work. That's not going to work. Now he passes it back out. He gets a screen. Now he goes for a three-pointer. To me, that's just like, that can't happen. That can't happen. Bam out of Bayou. You know, the thing with Miami, the Knicks are going to have to be overly aggressive on Miami. Like, the Knicks are going to have to be dogs against Miami. Yeah. Because Miami plays real rough, like street ball style type of basketball. Yeah, the, the Knicks gonna have to definitely bring that physicality to this to this series. If if they land uh, Miami, because like you said, they it's like a style of street ball that they play. Yeah, you know, it's just their style. Yeah, and I also think that you know, with Miami, you have to be careful because, you know, they play a little dirty, which we all already know. And somehow, someone on the Knicks gets injured and suffers a, a injury season long injury because when we play against Miami, but I think the Knicks can't afford to come out how they did last year where they were like a little too um, passive and they weren't aggressive enough. And we've all as fans have been complaining that the Knicks haven't been getting whistles, which they haven't. Brunson hasn't been getting the whistles, which he hasn't, but the Knicks have been playing very aggressive, right? And the whistles have been blown against us because they've been randomly just feeling like the Knicks are playing too aggressive, right? But I think that the Knicks are going to have to play aggressive. And if they match Miami's energy of not play even more aggressive, the refs are going to let them play. The refs are going to let them play. So nice that a new level of OG and Deuce will be shown in the playoffs. I truly believe that they will step the break on OG in order for him to go, for him to not go 100% due to playoff being around the corner. They about to unleash OG. <laughs> I hope to see OG unleash. I really do. I would love to see him unleash. Salute Just Knicks. Always tuning in and showing love. Yeah, as long as OG can't, you know, the, that Chicago game, he got like four fouls, so he just has he's he has to like watch his fouls because he's that defensive specialist, and he's covered so much. You know, he has to you know watch his fouls. You know, mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah, because they can't afford to have OG in foul trouble. You need yeah. him out on the floor. That that can't happen. Between iHeart and Mitch, I feel more comfortable in seeing iHeart making any type of shot. Yeah, well, Mitch is not really known to shoot the ball. He's more known to, you know, take the easier type of basket. So, you know, I mean, but either way, I, I just want iHeart and Mitch to both be aggressive offensively. You know, I mean, it's tall enough to catch that ball. You you know, pay aggressive against against whoever we play against. Um, I mean, both of them set great screens in games. Um, you know, that's something that I want Sims to get work on and get better at setting better screens. He doesn't plant his feet long enough to set the screen. So I think Sims definitely needs to work on that. But yeah, I heart, I just need him to take the shots. What makes Brunson so dangerous is he uses the backboard better than any other player in the, in the NBA. He does. Yeah. Brunson has great control and he's able to use that backboard where it's, 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 it keyword is very dangerous. It is. He, he does that very, very well, Brunson. I mean, just his timing, the footwork, um, you know, he, he's just, he's unstoppable, that guy. You know, I always say with Jalen Brunson, it's great 
defense on him, but it's just better offense. Okay. And that, yeah. to me, is what makes him in that superstar category. Because superstars know when they need to take control and take the lead. And even if they have a bad game, the first half, the first three quarters, they could pour it on in the fourth quarter. They command the ball and they know what to do with that ball. They have leadership. They have trust amongst their players. They can carry the team. I mean, he's getting plenty of Eastern Conference players of the weeks. He's averaging well over 30, 35 plus points a game. I mean, it speaks volumes to what he's done to this team, considering we haven't had a solid point guard in many years. He said, Deuce, Devo, better be ready. I thought he was saying you, Diva. Oh, Devo. I know. Diva. I know. I thought he was playing. <laughs> better be ready and playing no less than 48 minutes a game. We need both of them to rest, Brunson, and every opportunity we may find for him. But do you think that's um smart to have Deuce, Devo, I mean, hell, even Josh Hart playing that many minutes? Or at this point, it's it's you can't – it doesn't matter because you're going to need them to play it because who else are going to play? Well, I don't think Deuce is going to play 48 because he, he, Deuce is coming off the bench. And his um, minutes have been lessened, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the Devo, yeah, um, you know, cause you know, for the most part, you know, like who's who's Deuce is, you know, he he's coming off off for after Brunson, and nine times out of ten, he's still in, or you know, he he, he, he the minutes that but like they're gonna be expected to play a lot, you know, unfortunately. That's just how Ted's play. That's his style of play, um, you know. And, and at this point, these they're willing to play just to, if if it's gonna get them that win. But I don't see Deuce playing forty eight minutes. He he's playing, you know, probably maybe twenty, you know, somewhere around there. But deep, I I I, I expect him probably pay play about forty eight. Um, yeah, I think um, Dante. And Josh Hart are gonna play more along that forty plus minutes versus Deuce. I think Deuce maybe Max will get twenty five because maybe if Bojan minutes get lessened in one of the games throughout a series, then yeah. But I don't see um, Deuce Deuce playing that many minutes. I think Devo Josh Hart for sure are gonna play a lot of minutes. Um, and then, you know, you're going to have Brunson playing about 35, maybe 38 minutes in certain games. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, let me see. Miami did us a favor last season, last postseason. We match against them. But that is... The honest reason Nick's front office traded IQ RJ for a player like OG that can guard a Butler Greek and somewhat Maxi. Yeah, but see, the thing is, is I feel like I think OG is a great defender, but is OG going to be the answer for Maxi? Maybe not. Maxi is quick, he's gotten better. Is OG going to be the answer for, um, I don't even know who OG would be guarding on Miami. Would it be Tyler Hero or would it be um, Butler or neither of them, right? Yeah, they, they got the, I don't know, they got them, that player, um, Nicola J J Jovic or something like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, he, he's, he's playing, you know, that's their... So it it may you know be a toss between Butler and 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 Nikola Jovic I think that's his name mm -hmm. um, that 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 they have um, but um, as for for Miami but Philly um, Max Maxie's quick um, you know he he he's like a Brunson he he can you know get his shot off so that's that's gonna be a a tough matchup you know as far as 
him guarding him, you know, he he'll get some stops, but Max is gonna, you know, definitely, you know, score. But um, and saying you, I see him, he'd be a good matchup for Giannis because he 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 he's proven that. Um, but I think Butler and, and Giannis definitely, but Maxi, that's gonna be, you know, Mac Maxi's like 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 a Brunson somewhat, you know. Where, so who you know, do you think should guard Maxi? Um. You know, they may try to, you know, put um which I, I don't see, you know, Devo doing the best job. So, but that that's yeah. that's a toss up. But I, I don't see cause you know, Devo's not, you know, he's not no defensive specialist, that's for sure. Um they may, you know, may even try to even see and that's just it. We even with um Miles, he doesn't play that many minutes. You know, uh, but they they may try to you know switch OG for or on to Maxi, but it's it's you know it's 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 a tough matchup. You know, OG six seven Maxi, you know he he he's he's like he's he's a short guard, but and he's quick. Yeah, I think um, I think it would have to be like a Deuce or a Josh Hart to guard him, yeah. because I don't see Dante Divincenzo keeping up with him. I just see. Yeah. Tyrese Maxey getting past him every time. And honestly, Maxey's done that every other time we played them. He just gets right by our players. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I, I think that's where the defensive collapses can't happen in the postseason. You know, the Knicks are going to have to figure out ways to stop guys and stop teams and stop those other players who we're not necessarily mentioning right now. But you're allowing him to shoot from wherever and whenever, and you know you look up and this random player has 22 points, and we're like, how? Because we're not guarding him. Yeah. So yeah. We should go after Kobe White in off season. He's presently 12 million. I don't know. Is Chicago gonna try to sign him? I haven't really looked that up. I mean, he would be a great addition. Yeah. I do like the way he plays. His game has grown and he's gotten a shine because of um what you call it is hurt. Um I uh, forget his name. I know, you know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Is off the um oops. Is off the team. I forgot who it was. Um, Zach Levine, I believe it is. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's why he's he's gotten the um the shine because Zach was hurt. But yeah, he's he's definitely proven something to Chicago that you know they may want to try to keep him. But yeah, I I still think that the Knicks, depending on how we do in the postseason, they're definitely gonna have to make some type of move because we're still missing a piece or two, in my opinion. I've been saying that for a while. Oh yeah, for sure. Our team has issues with team shooting three pointers. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Knicks are gonna have to tighten up the defense. The defensive collapses can't happen. The shoot allowing teams to shoot threes, you know, all willy nilly. The Knicks have to nip that quick. That can't happen. Allowing players to do like what Kobe White was doing, just driving in the lane, no one stopping them. That can't happen. You know, so I think the Knicks got a lot of cleaning up to do be- before we get to Saturday's game. And, you know, once you they figure out tomorrow who they're playing, great. Now just lock in and get ready to 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 go to battle. And that's what it's going to take, a true battle and give it everything you have. And they, the Knicks are going to have to want it more. If the yeah. Knicks are going to want it more, they will win that first round series and move on to the next one. I just think it takes... Take, don't even worry about second round, Eastern Conference Final. Start off with the first round. Take it each game, one by one in a series. If the Knicks can try to, I would prefer for them to not go win one game, allow the other team to win the second game, win the next. You know, try to, if you can. And then, you know what? I was even thinking, I said, even with a team like Miami, I said, hypothetically, let's just say the Knicks won the first two, maybe three games. You think a team like that's not going to try to come back and win the next few games? Like, you can't get laxed. 
You know what I mean? Like you got to keep your foot on these teams necks and not let go until you finish that series off. And that's the same thing. Even if the Knicks are able to get leads throughout any of these games throughout the series, hold on to that lead and maintain it until the, the game is over. Yeah, so Miami's all of them, a team gonna, you can't sleep on. No. The Knicks can go up at least the first two games, and we all think, oh, snap, you know, we all hype. And Jimmy's like, oh, okay. Now, now it's really on and popping. And now, you know what I mean? So you can't you can't do that against a team like that. But we'll see. We have some more um to uh, break down with this team. I didn't even get to um, present my slide with the playoffs, but I'll show it really quickly. So, of course, I have our banner in the way. Gotta love it. <laughs> well, that's the that's the number one seeded team you recall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, if you guys can see, um, Boston will be play is number one, so they'll be playing whoever lands in the eighth seed. Cleveland and my uh, Orlando will be playing. Uh, they'll be playing Saturday as well as with the Knicks. And then you're going to have uh, Milwaukee, who's at the three seed, play Indiana, who's at sixth on Sunday. The Knicks will be waiting to find out who wins between the um, winner of uh, Philly and Miami. Um, so that'll be Saturday. Against it's TBD as far as the timing. We just know it's Saturday. So the Saturday games are the Knicks and whoever wins between Philly or Heat or uh, Miami. And uh, Cleveland is going to be playing in Orlando. I think the Cleveland Orlando series is going to be very interesting. I think that series is going to be very interesting because I think that could go either way, even though I kind of feel like Orlando is going to beat Cleveland. But I don't want to count Cleveland out, but I feel like Orlando may win that series. I don't know why. I just feel like they may have them on that one. I, I just, yeah. So, yeah, we'll we'll see what um what happens. Um, I feel like Boston's gonna have an easy ride the first round for them, and Milwaukee and Indiana. Um, I don't know. Well, Giannis is hurt. Um, you know yeah, he's, he's still out still with that. Um, I think that that calf for him and calf injury. Um, I don't know. I, I just I I see Indiana like t taking that from from Milwaukee, especially yeah. if Giannis don't come back a hundred percent. And then, but you know, then they um, you know, they. They beat him in the um, what's that? The, the end season. So I mean, I, I I can see Indiana taking that, you know. Yeah, I no, I agree. I well, I read today that I don't think Giannis. I think he's gonna be out for the first round, or at least maybe like the first few games. I don't think he's expected yeah. to play. And you know, so now that puts the pressure on um Dame Dollars to carry them. So, you know, and then they lost Drew Holiday. Chris Middleton don't look the same. Brooke Lopez, I don't know about him either. But, you know, I, but I, I do think Indiana could take Milwaukee for sure. Um, Cleveland and Orlando, I think, I think Orlando might take that one. Could be wrong, but I, I don't know why. So I feel like, but listen, Knicks and whoever we face, I like the Knicks being the underdogs. I've been saying this. I'm going to continue to keep saying this. The Knicks have a story to tell, and I they're here to beat whoever it is in the first round. We can't be scared of anybody. And I'm not really worried about the West because they're doing whatever they're doing. I'm worried about the Knicks right now. So, But I'll be tuned into the you know games, of course. But For sure. So, you know, we'll see what happens. So tomorrow will be interesting um, to see who wins the games tomorrow. Um, 76ers Heat play first on ESPN at 7. And then you have um, Chicago's playing Atlanta uh, Wednesday. I think Chicago's going to be Atlanta. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I have Chicago. Uh... Atlanta just hasn't been this – has, this wasn't their season. So – 
And then I will say for the West, that New Orleans and Laker game is going to be very interesting. Because I, I don't know. I've, I feel like the Lakers are going to beat them. LeBron's not going to want to go out like that. And Sacramento and the Warriors, I see uh, the Warriors um, beating Sacramento. Yeah, but if 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 LA wins, don't they uh they face um if they win tonight, they face uh was that Denver, no? Oh no, yeah. they gotta play um No, they'll yeah, be playing O K C. Yeah, for the um Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll be playing O K C. So right. Yeah, DJ, I playing. know. A tough a tough feat. But um, you know, I think O K C is young, but I think that and they may not have as much um, playoff player experience, but they're still a very good team. And I think they'll be able to figure it out, you know. But, um, yeah, we'll see. So, you know, got the games coming on for the West tonight. Tomorrow will be the Easting uh, games. And I'll be looking to see what Philly and Miami does, you know. And listen, whoever we play, like I said, the Knicks just need to be ready. Doesn't matter. Exactly. Yep. So we'll keep um, updating that playoff bracket to keep you guys posted. Um, Eddie said, referees will give Embiid many calls. Yeah, but I think, you know, the Knicks can't allow the lack of calls to frustrate them. You know, the complaining and don't let that take you out your game. Some Not every call is going to go to us. And, you know, the Knicks are the underdogs and the Knicks are not going to get the calls, unfortunately. You know, this is not nothing new. And B truly may not be 50% good based on how he left last time. And B is walking on eggshells. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's looked well coming back from that injury, but I, I don't think that that's the count in beat out. I think Embiid is still going to have a good series no matter what. And I think he's going to come out strong tomorrow against Miami. I mean, he's just a good player regardless. John said, whoever we play must average 35-plus rebounds every game. Our rebounding and defense will carry us where we need to go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's true. Got to out-rebound them, you know, which is true. That's the, it's, it's shown. When we out rebound teams, um, that that's 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 the difference maker, you know, especially yeah. that defense. That's the difference maker. Yeah, for sure. When the Knicks really pour on their defense, it's we frustrate teams, and we're able to take advantage of that, which is nice. And I agree with the rebounds. I think I want to see other guys crashing the boards and not just Josh Hart. He does that really well. He has like springs under his feet. He jumps so high. Against it could be against the tallest player, and he's able to grab the rebound. But you know, I, I think that definitely out rebounding the defense, and also just I think when we are on offense, one of the things that I think the Knicks can do to help them when Jalen Brunson is on the bench is if they can have Hart and Steen in the game at times when Brunson is on a bench. I think guys should look to cut. And they should try to go with that so that way they can get the easy basket or get fouled while trying, yeah. you know? So that way the offense is not stagnant and guys are able to move without the ball. But, yeah, anything else for you, Diva Locks, before we get out of here? No, I'm just watching some games this week just to see who four, seven, eight. Hey, I'm just waiting for the Knicks. Hopefully Mitch is working on his conditioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I hope Mitch is like working on that throughout this week. I, I know it's only a week, but yeah, he's his stamina is not there. He's been looking tired those last few games, and that sucks because you can't play to the best of your ability when you're yeah. out of shape, you know. And, and his time and his jump too, as well. Yeah, so. yeah, I've noticed that too, which we need because we need him to get those blocks and defensive stops. He has that in him. But it's the conditioning that's hurting him. Mm. But he'll get there. He'll get there the more he starts to play throughout the postseason. But 
Salute to the chat, Eddie C for joining us as always. Coach Sar 617 for joining us as always. Joseph Cologne, salute to you and your wife for watching us. We appreciate it. Shaw Power, salute for always tuning in and watching us as, as well. Marcel Montgomery, salute. B Bowler, for real, for what is that supposed to be? For FR? I hope I'm saying your, your, um, your name right. Cotton Candy, salute. Nice salute, John McDonald salute, Sharice Duncan salute for watching us and tuning in. Just Nix always tuning in. Salute to you as well. Um, and so all of you who are not in the chat and watched us, salute to you as well. Um, keep watching us. We're on on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6:30 p.m. And if you have time Saturday morning and you're up, we're on at 10:30 a.m. every Saturday morning. So grab your tea, grab your coffee. And let's uh, chat about the Knicks. Um, so we'll definitely be on, especially this Saturday for sure, um, to get prepared for the Knicks game. It may be an early one, so look out for that. And then you can catch me on Mondays. I'm on a Queens court. Shout out to um, Queen Stephanie um, every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Um, on Mondays on the Nothing But Knicks channel. If you haven't already subscribed to their channel, um, and look out for some guests, especially with the playoffs coming up. And for any live events we, wait, we may be at, um, hit the like button before you guys get out of here. Um, and subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, tell a friend to tell a friend. And as always, we'll see you on Thursday. Have a great night, everybody. Peace. Hey.